Right, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this, uh, the first meeting in 2014 of the Economy, Energy and Tourism uh, Committee. Welcome uh, all committee members. Uh, welcome our uh, witnesses and any visitors with us. And to those of you who I haven't seen so far, a happy new year. Can I remind everyone, please, to turn off uh, all their mobile phones, or at least turn to silent all mobile phones and other electronic devices so they don't interfere with the committee's work. Uh, we have no apologies this morning. Uh, Chick Brody, I think, is running late. Um, but should be with us uh, shortly. Uh, item one on the agenda, um, I would ask if the committee uh, are content that we take item three in private later in the meeting uh, and at uh, future meetings, and also to decide to take item four in private later in the meeting. Are we agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Uh, item two on the agenda is uh, we're looking at uh, progress of plans for tourism and major events in 2014, following up some work the committee did uh, last year. And I'm delighted to welcome back to the committee Malcolm Ruffhead, uh, who is the Chief Executive of Visit Scotland, uh, and Caroline Packman, uh, Director of Homecoming Scotland. Welcome to you both. Uh, before we get into questions, do you want to say something by way of an introduction? Malcolm. Thank you, Convener. Uh, very briefly, uh, I would just like to thank you all for the opportunity to present to the committee. Uh, as Scotland obviously welcomes the world in this very exciting year for, for us all, uh, for us, this year, the, the tourism industry reaches the pinnacle of the, uh, the winning years, which uh, you've no doubt heard about, which were eight key milestone events, uh, which over the last few years have helped to prepare the industry for 2014, and, and importantly, not just for 2014, but 2014 and beyond. Uh, according to the recent research, which was um, prepared by Deloitte, the visitor economy is worth more than £11.6 billion to Scotland each year. And Visit Scotland with our partners is determined to ensure that, that this success story uh, continues. Scotland has a commanding and enviable position in global tourism with strong interest in our product. Uh, and that comes from around the world. And that's exemplified by the likes of Lonely Planet's endorsement of Scotland's position within the top three places uh, in the world to visit this year. And that led on from uh, CNN's endorsement of Scotland as the place to visit last year. In fact, only this week they're uh, featured in the New York Times uh, an article placing Scotland in the top 20 places to, to visit this year. However, uh, as much as these accolades and plaudits are, are welcome, there's clearly no room for complacency. Uh, we have to fight hard to get people here. We have to make sure that the experience that, that they have when they're here is second to none. And then we have to fight even harder to get them to come back. The committee will have read, obviously, uh, about the activity uh, which we have undertaken and which we have planned for the year. Uh, I hope you've also noticed the strength of the partnerships uh, which are in place and the plans to evaluate the outcomes and the achievements uh, of the year. I'd just like to say that uh, partnership to us is absolutely fundamental to success. <coughs> and I would like to thank all the members here for their interest uh, in the events of 2014 and for your support around those, uh, those events. And clearly, if uh, you would like to attend, uh, any of the over 430 events that have taken place across the length and breadth of the country, we would be more than delighted to assist you uh, in doing so. Uh, convener, just in closing, I'd just like to say that I believe the industry is in good shape. I think there is a sense of collaboration and partnership, uh, which is very strong, not just within the uh, too narrow definition of the tourism industry, but across the, the wider visitor economy. Uh, 2014 is clearly a unique opportunity for us to position Scottish tourism on a global stage and I can assure you that we are doing everything we can with our partners to make sure that we uh, take full advantage of that opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Ruffhead. Thank you for that introduction. There's quite a number of issues you, you've touched on there which I'm sure members will want to tease out in, uh, in questioning. Uh, can I maybe start by um, asking about a, a late submission you made to the, the committee that came in just on, on uh, Monday in relation to the delivery of the Bannockburn live event, 
where you're telling us it's now been agreed that Visit Scotland will take on a leadership role uh, in relation to delivery uh, of that particular event. Um, I wonder if you could just explain a little bit about the background to that, why that, why that came about, and whether there's going to be any change in the uh, tone of, of that event, or whether it's, it, organisationally it will be the same, it's just a, it's an administrative matter that's being dealt with. It certainly, um, I'll just very briefly, uh, I think it's more to do with the fact that if you think about the weekend now, on the Friday night we have Pipe Fest in, in Stirling, we have obviously the Armed Forces Day over the weekend and also Bannockburn. So in terms of being able to cope with uh, you know, marketing uh, a myriad of events and uh, you know, the, uh, dealing with the logistics, that is an area that we have a lot more experience than, than the National Trust in. Uh, and for that reason, we have decided that you know, we are happy to take on the stewardship, if you like, of, of uh, the, the Bannockburn Live event itself. It doesn't actually mean that there's any change in the partners. They're all sitting around the table. Um, obviously, we're working still with Stirling Council, the Ministry of Defence and others. But all it is is a, a straightforward assignment of responsibility. The actual programme plan for that day isn't changing as, as a result of this? No, that's right. And okay. uh, Caroline might want to say a little bit more about the event itself, but in essence, uh, it's much more about the logistics and management of that. Okay. okay. Yes, I mean, the, the event is still very much designed to be a, a commemoration, obviously, of the 700th anniversary of the Battle of Bannockburn. So it will include spectacular battle reenactments, but also other activity to make sure that it's an event that appeals to all the family. So there'll be, for example, um, a clan village, um, there'll be um, <coughs> literature, music, storytelling, uh, food and drink, um, arts and crafts. So an event really that, uh, um, that is designed to, to appeal to, to everyone has, has been in the attention right from the outset. I mean, the, the steering group meetings have been in place for well over a year now. Um, the planning is well underway, uh, working with unique events who are, are very well respected in the events industry. They continue to manage the programme for us. Um, so to all intents and purposes, um, the, it is simply, as, as, as you put it, an administrative change. Um, in relation to the, both the Bannockburn event and, and the homecoming more generally, you, you remember that the committee did a report last year looking at some of this and we expressed our concern that um, the level of visitors from North America might not match what we had in 2009. Can you give us an update where we are with that? Do, do you have a sense of what level of North American visitors are likely to be coming? Uh, generally, what, what I can tell you is that the, the latest information we've had uh, now, obviously, independent travellers tend to you know, sort of, um, decide a little bit later on, but in, uh, from the travel trade, so companies such as CIE Tours and Globus, they're all predicting fairly substantial increases in the number of visitors coming uh, through their own packaged product. Uh, and that's been confirmed also by uh, industry contacts uh, on the ground. I think the, the other aspect to that is um, the, the initial feedback that we've had. You may recall that, that we announced um, the new flight coming in from Chicago to, to Edinburgh, and uh, the initial feedback from United Airlines is that that is selling extremely well at the moment. That's also been... Um, uh, supplemented by an increase in capacity with US Airways coming out of uh, Philadelphia and also flying into to Edinburgh and Air Canada, Air Canada Rouge have also increased capacity out, out of um, Toronto. So those are all based on demand. Okay. Remember one of the issues we, we looked at previously was um, interaction with the clan societies in the US. Do you have a sense of what level of, of bookings are coming from the clan societies? Not, not specifically. Uh, again, we, what we can say is that, uh, obviously, if you take Bannockburn Live, I believe all the, the, uh, the opportunities for the clans have sold out. Uh, there's a number, as you'll have seen from the homecoming programme itself, there's a number of clan events, uh, and they themselves uh, are looking to welcome clan members um, to their own events. Uh, I couldn't put an actual figure on it. It's, you know, it's something that they would book direct with, uh, with the clans uh, as opposed to coming through us. I think, I think what I'm trying to understand, Mr Ruffhead, is in relation to 2009, which 
was quite a success, as we understand, in terms of attracting North Americans to, to, to the gathering event that took place in Edinburgh in particular, and then they went elsewhere in Scotland. Are we going to be at that level? Or are we ahead of the game? Are we behind it? Can you give any assessment? Uh, I don't. Uh, I couldn't, as I say, I couldn't give you an exact figure. I can only give you the anecdotal evidence, mm. and uh, it could well be that the bookings, uh, you know, the strength in the bookings that the airlines are reporting are specific to, to the homecoming event, or it could also be related to the Ryder Cup. Uh, until we do a little bit of detailed analysis around uh, provenance mm. and uh, the actual date of the bookings, it, it's difficult to strip that out. Okay. okay. Um, just before I bring, bring others in, one, one more thing I want to ask about. Um, 2014 is a big year, but we've got lots of events taking place. It's also a big year in politics. And, you know, Lord McConnell made a call um, last week to say uh, campaigning uh, in the, the referendum uh, should uh, be put on one side during the Commonwealth Games. Now, I don't expect you to comment on that necessarily, but, you know, clearly there is, there is an issue with uh, the potential politicisation of different events that are taking place. Is this something that you're concerned about? Have you issued any guidance to, to your, uh, your, your partners about how you deal with potential politicisation of events or, for example, looking at you know, marketing companies who you employ? Is this something that you've, you've issued any guidance to them about? Well, I, I think the, the most welcome thing is that uh, tourism has cross-party support. All these events have cross-party support and, uh, and obviously we, we would welcome that. I mean, we are there to, to grow the visitor economy. Uh, and that's it, and, and that's our role. <clears throat> Certainly all of our partners, we've, no, we've not had anybody uh, question you know, what role they should take, and I don't think they would. It's, for everyone involved in these events, it's about maximising the, the economic benefit. Okay. 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 Um, yeah, thanks, uh, and, and good morning. Um, maybe just to, to, to look at uh, uh, your response with regard to the, the, the clan situation. Obviously, we've got a clan village, uh, and uh, from your comments, it would appear that they, that's a sellout in itself. Um, is there a sort of um, disjoint between yourselves and the clan chiefs regarding 2014 and what's going on? Um, I would have thought, in terms of the partnership working, I would have thought you've been working uh, indeed with the clan chiefs in trying to bring things together uh, and be an integral part of what is going on. We have been working extremely closely with the clans, um, both through the Stanley Council of Scottish Chiefs, through the recently established Highland Clan Partnership Group, um, both with regard to Bannockburn, of the clan pictures, seven pictures have been sold directly to clans who are based in North America, um, and that's in addition to the pictures that have been sold to, to UK-based clans who will be bringing in visitors from across the world. Um, another point to add is that uh, we're aware of uh, 34 clan gatherings which are featured on our website, uh, so we're very much working with those organisers to promote them as well. Um, and also you may be aware that recently we set up um, a Scottish clan event fund as well, which gives clan, uh, uh, clan societies and families the opportunity to apply for funding to support their own events through 2014 and indeed 2015. Um, so we've been working extremely closely with them. Uh, ancestry, as you know, is one of the key themes of Homecoming Scotland 2014. Um, so that close partnership working is very much in place. I'm delighted to hear that, and it's, it's good to have that sort of confirmation that in, in terms of that you continue to promote the, the work of the clans as well, and they're working with you. And I know in my own constituency with the National Trust of Scotland, uh, I think we're having the, the reopening of Drum Castle in itself, which is, uh, will be, uh, I think, a, a very good uh, event for uh, people within the Royal D side. In terms of continuing the, the, the partnership theme here, um, how often are you meeting with your partners in, in terms of developing the, the work in terms of homecoming and the event uh, within Bannockburn? How often are you meeting with the partners, such as the MOD, police, um, transport, etc.? Um, there's a, um, a sophisticated governance structure in place for Bannockburn Live and for the National Armed Forces Day. Um, we have um, a, a joint liaison steering group which has been set up, which covers both events, uh, which is uh, uh, very much geared to ensuring the success of those two events and the other events happening in Stirling around that weekend. 
that meeting meets monthly. In addition to that, we have a joint transport and infrastructure subgroup, which meet, meets monthly. And as of next month, we will have a joint marketing and communications subgroup, which meets monthly. That is in addition to the separate Bannockburn Live steering group, which meets monthly, and an operational group, which meets monthly. It looks like you're attending a lot of meetings <laughs> <laughs> on a monthly basis. Um, uh, in terms of the, the wider events within the, the taking in, uh, encompassing the whole year of 2014, maybe we went to 15, um, is Visit Scotland content that the rest of Scotland are, are uh, involved um, in, in uh, getting in, and ba basically getting involved in, in the whole aspect of this uh, momentous year in 2014. You know, I mean, we've got the Ryder Cup, we've got the Junior Ryder Cup, we've probably got events uh, in, in other areas uh, of the country. Do you think it's spread out well enough and uh, there's going to be an engagement in the, in the rest of Scotland? That's the wonderful thing about the homecoming programme is that it does offer the opportunities for businesses and communities right across the country to get involved. Um, we have uh, events happening in every single local authority area of Scotland. It's been one of our objectives right from the outset to achieve the geographical spread of events. Um, we've worked very closely with industry associations across the country, destination marketing associations and so forth. Um, and that geographical diversity is reflected in all our marketing communications, including the, um, the new TV ad that we launched just last week. I think you'll be promoting the, uh, a, the, the first ever World Sheepdog Trials coming to Scotland. That's tea? correct, yes, happening in tea, and that's right. So that's, uh, that's one of the, the new events in the calendar for 2014 that we're very delighted is coming to Scotland. Uh, it's fine. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks. OK, thank you, Dennis. Uh, Margaret has a, a similar question, I think, about events across Scotland. Yes, uh, thank you, convener, and good morning. It was really just to follow up on uh, Dennis's uh, questioning on how involved local authorities are, because just looking through the you know, the extensive programme that you have here, um, it occurs to me that many of these events are annual events and they happen on an annual basis anyway. Uh, so what additional, you know, additionality has been brought to the homecoming year? Um, and also from, you know, from my own knowledge locally of North Ayrshire, <coughs> just looking through it, uh, North Ayrshire has a few events but they all seem, well, all bar one are in Arran. So, okay, um, to, to start at the beginning of your mm -hmm. question in terms of the split between um, new and existing events and the overall programme of, of 430 events, 23% um, uh, of the events to which we are allocating funding are new, 15% uh, of the total of 430 events are new. Of the 430 events, we are providing funding support to 74. In all those cases, those events will be enhanced or expanded specifically as a result of the homecoming funding. So it may be that they're able to incorporate new programming elements this year or they're able to target a new market segment. Um, perhaps they um, market themselves overseas for the first time. So in each of those cases, we are, we are providing funding support. It's very much based on the criteria of generating additionality and of <coughs> ensuring that we generate a return on the investment that we are providing. Um, in terms of the, um, the events in, in your own constituency, uh, Aaron has been particularly proactive in becoming involved with the programme. Um, through the, the partner programme in particular, which is very much still open for events right across the country to sign up to. And as a result of that, um, they will be included in our marketing and promotional activities for the rest of the year. So that invitation is very much open to any additional events that are happening to become involved in the homecoming programme. So but what has 
been done to encourage local authorities where there doesn't seem to be that geographic spread? You know, you said that the Aran has been very much involved because they have their own tourist uh, organisation and they will get invitations. So for the, the local authorities who have been a little bit less involved up till now, what are you doing to try and get them to become involved? We've worked very closely with local authorities right across the country, both on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, Event Scotland has a regular programme of meetings that's held with local authority uh, chief executives and senior officials on an ongoing basis, which was in place well before the homecoming year and will continue beyond it. But specifically for homecoming, we've been in contact with relevant officials in each local authority, uh, which may be their events management officials, it may be their economic development <coughs> officials, it varies by local authority. Also, we're working very closely with, uh, with SOLAS and the Legacy Leads grouping that's been set up, uh, which meets on a monthly basis, which we attend and, and have subsequent follow-up meetings as well. So those relationships have been in place right from the start. Um, some local authorities uh, have indeed set up their, their own funding, like Aberdeenshire to, uh, and Fife, to supplement the homecoming activities as well. Um, so that, uh, that working relationship is very much uh, in ongoing. So is the... If I could just... One final question. If a local authority decides to become involved now, is there still the opportunity for them to do that? And, you know, is there funding available? Um, there's no funding available anymore. Mm -hmm. That has all been allocated. But we're very happy to work with them to welcome additional events into the programme and um, support them with marketing and promotion. Um, do you, I, 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 well, any other members got an issue, a question on, on the, specifically on the programme of events? Useful to know that. Can I, can I just ask one, one follow-up, just looking at the programme? Uh, events I don't see listed here are the Edinburgh Festival and the Festival Fringe. Any particular reason why they're not on your list? We're working with components of the Edinburgh Festival. For example, the, the Mela is one event uh, that we're providing funding support to. Um, the Edinburgh Art Festival is another one. Um, um, also, uh, um, another major event that uh, that we're not in a position to announce quite yet. Um, but we've we've split out the individual components rather than group them together as as the Edinburgh Festival. But they are integral to the homecoming program, um, and indeed will be the focus of our activity uh, in the month of July and August. Right. Okay. But so the actual festival itself, though, is that's you're not partnering with them on a, on a um, official basis? Um, we're, we're, well, we, we are in that um, it's uh, components of it rather than mm. just lumping it together. Yeah, well, I mean, was, you know, the Edinburgh International Festival as an event, you, you, you don't have a formal well, the, the link Edinburgh with that. The International Festival receives uh, funding through the Event Scotland mechanism and, uh, and clearly Festivals Edinburgh is a major strategic partner for us on an ongoing basis. Okay. Alison, do you want to follow up on this? It's point? not on the programme of events. Right, okay, well, I'll come back to you because I'll have to come. Okay. Um, sorry, Mike McKenzie. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, thank you, uh, convener. Um, I'm just interested in a wee bit more information about You mentioned that there's 74 or something like that, that, that number of events that you're directly supporting through you know, financial assistance or whatever. But the remainder of the events that you're not supporting financially, what kind of support? Are you giving, or perhaps you can describe that partnership arrangement a wee bit more? Of course. Um, the, the first um, uh, benefit that those events receive is that they are listed on our <coughs> website as part of the event search engines, so that when people come to our website, which receives over 15 million visits a year, and when they're, they're searching for homecoming events, then they will be returned. Um, so it, it helps extend the reach of those events. Um, also, um, there's the opportunity, um, if they're particularly unusual or, or quirky or, or significant for whatever reason, they'll be included in our ongoing PR activity that our consumer PR teams undertake, both in Scotland, the UK and the rest of the world. 
there's the opportunity for them to be included in the e-newsletters that we send out. Um, and they can use the, the homecoming brand and be part of the, the overall promotional activity as well. So there's real added value, uh, even for those that you're not directly supporting financially? Yes, yes, absolutely. That's right. And, I mean, so far, um, we've had, um, um, you know, I'm trying to do the mental arithmetic here, but we, we've had almost four, well, about 346 events, I think it is, that have obviously seen the benefits of that to the extent to sign up to the partner programme. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's all I like. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm just wondering that uh, what's the level of engagement with the Glasgow Mela, which is the, the biggest Mela in Scotland? What, 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 what level of engagement do you have with them, or do you intend to have engagement with them this year? We have been talking to them, and that's something that we'd very much like to pursue as well. Yes, absolutely. So you're saying you don't have any more funding, so is talking going to help? Um, in terms of promoting them, then absolutely, yes, it will help, yes. How? Uh, through the, the ways that I, I've just d described. Um, I'm not convinced. Uh, um, I think, um, considering it's the, it's the biggest mail in Scotland, I think it needs a lot more uh, support than you've indicated, mm -hmm. considering it's the year of the Commonwealth Games as well, mm -hmm. which, is, uh, uh, which has an additional importance to the, the whole element. Uh, I would have liked to have felt that you were going to give them more than just a chat. We'll certainly take it away and look at it again. That's very helpful. Um, and we are working very closely as well with the, the Culture 14 programme too, yes. uh, so that Homecoming is interwoven within that. So we've got very strong relationships there. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working on a collaboration with, with Tin Forest, which will be one of the, the flagship events within Culture 14 in Glasgow. Um, so that's, that's something else to, to note, yeah. Chair, are you moving on to other yes, items, just, just if I may? Yep. Uh, it's just that it's a follow-on from the mirror itself. I mean, one of the things I've noticed up and down Scotland is the, the sparseness of the attendance of the indigenous minority, visible minority communities in Scotland at events in Scotland. What steps are you taking to address that? Well, we've been working with the uh, Black and Ethnic Minorities in Scotland grouping, um, specifically to ensure their involvement in homecoming, to get them on board. Um, so that's one step that we're taking. Uh, we're um, very aware of the need to ensure that events appeal right across the spectrum of Scotland um, to all segments of the population, um, and that's something that... that uh, um, we're very keen to ensure as, as part of homecoming. So how will that increase your numbers? Uh, are you going to, uh, have you made any targets for yourself to achieve in, in relation to this? Or uh, are you just hoping... No, no, we haven't broken it down to the, to the extent of, of that level of detail, no. <coughs> and when would that happen? Well, I, th I think we, we also have to, to remember that it's the event organisers who are putting on those and who are selling the tickets and who, by and large, are, are also communicating with the audiences. Uh, and their knowledge of, of the wider audience will be far greater than, than ours. They are, they are the experts. What we're trying to do is give them additional platforms, as Caroline says, so that they can extend the reach. Um, but I think the, the, the interesting point about the MELA is that uh, clearly that is part of the overall Glasgow programme and we are working very closely with, uh, with Glasgow Life uh, around the programme. But uh, it's a, po a good point you raise and we will take that away and, and have a look at what our engagement with the MELA is and could be. Yeah. Chair, I don't want to accuse our <coughs> guests of passing the buck. But I, I do feel that, you know, uh, I, I, need, I need some more strong evidence of how you hope to, to engage. Because homecoming is not only about our cousins in the North Americas and uh, Australian and New Zealand visiting Scotland. Absolutely. It's about us Scots visiting Scotland as well. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. the indigenous minority, visible minority community is part and parcel of that. And I, I genuinely believe that there's, there's a weakness there. Um, and so I, w I would very much welcome uh, you coming back to me and, and advising me of what additional steps you've taken to try and address that. Happy to do that. The, the, the other um, points I was, I was trying to find out was, what are we going to do in terms of encouraging uh, trade uh, during the festivals this year? I mean, 
I know that in some parts there are stalls for traders as well, but it's quite limited, and I, I, I think it's a huge opportunity for our businesses to engage with, uh, particularly from people overseas, and of course uh, our home growing industry as well. Uh, how are you? Are you using that as one aspect of homecoming as well in terms of engaging with our businesses? And if so, how are we doing that? Yeah, it's a good point, Yuri. Uh, clearly, areas like food and drink, arts and crafts, you know, are part of the fabric of, of what people look for when when they come to Scotland, and, and we do encourage through the event contracts that we have that um, Scottish food and drink uh, providers and suppliers are, um, are utilised as much as they can be. Uh, obviously, different different um, events and festivals offer different opportunities. And to make the, the wider uh, business community aware of those, we've worked very, very closely with uh, the likes of uh, FSB, Scottish Chambers of Commerce. We've been out. I myself have covered every chamber of commerce around the country and I have another couple coming up uh, next week. So, you know, we, we're doing as much as we can do through those uh, organisations and their memberships to make sure, you know, that uh, it's as diverse as possible and that people do take the opportunities that, that undoubtedly exist. So is there going to be an increase uh, in terms of opportunities for businesses to um, advertise or even sell their products at our events this year or is it going to be status quo? No, I, I would totally anticipate that there will be more people involved in, in having that opportunity to, to sell their, their products. How, do we measure, they how, how will we measure that then? Well, we, we would look at how many people have actually been given concessions, how many stalls there are. Uh, Caroline mentioned, for example, the Bannockburn Live event where you know, we, we would be looking to feature food and drink, arts and crafts, etc. So, uh, you know, at the end of, of the programme, we'll be able to, to actually uh, look at how many people have been engaged and, and how many businesses are new uh, in terms of working with Visit Scotland. Uh, just, just fine, Chair. Um, in, in terms of uh, businesses, I mean, some of our businesses are very strong and, and very capable of uh, marketing themselves, and they do a very good job. However, there are new and up-and-coming young businesses who are perhaps not as well downed with either resources or experience. Uh, is anybody going to be helping them to realise uh, and utilise the, the festival this year? Do yes, again, any, any and again, just to answer that. that. I mean, through various uh, organisations, if you take, for example, a destination management organisation, uh, just the one that pops into my mind is the one in Argyle. Uh, and they have uh, myriad small businesses uh, who possibly couldn't, uh, as you rightly say, uh, reach out to, to a wider market, but collectively they can. So what uh, Food and Drink uh, from Argyle are doing is working with us. So within that collective, they have the opportunity, uh, and it's the old sum of the parts analogy. Right. Okay. Um, Scotland Food and Drink offers quite a lot of advice for, for food and drink suppliers specifically to get them involved in events and how they can they can best tailor their their offering and uh, um, you know any kind of regulations that they're required to comply with so that's another good source for um, food and drink related businesses is Scotland food and drink um, and then also it's about businesses identifying which events are happening in their area and making direct contact with them as well um, so again the the first port of call for for businesses to find out what events are happening can be through the, the Homecoming Scotland website where all the events are listed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, go back to Mike McKinley. Uh, thank you, Convener. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in the, the, the methodology that you use to evaluate your effectiveness. I mean, Henry Ford famously said that half the money he spent in advertising was a complete waste uh, if you only knew which half it was you wouldn't spend it um so what 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 you know what mythology perhaps you can describe the mythology methodology that you use a um, method <laughs> slip of the tongue the methodology that you use rather than the mythology um uh, to to evaluate your effectiveness so shall i start with, with how we're planning to evaluate uh, to homecoming 
Um, we've appointed independent economic impact consultants. Um, the, it's a consortium led by the Moffat Centre, including um, consultants from Grid Economics and from Cogency. Um, and um, the methodology that, um, that we'll be using for, to evaluate 2014 is... Um, based on a, a more sophisticated and much more up-to-date model than was used in 2009. Um, in terms of how it is measured, um, the consultants will be carrying out primary research, so audience interviews at selected events across the country throughout the year um, to gather primary data. Um, and then also they have, uh, this will be applied to a model which um, is a, a monthly multi-destination model. So it will, um, it will be able to evaluate the appropriate spend by those visitors, depending on which region of the, the country the event is taking place and which other parts of the country they go on to visit as well because uh, clearly the expenditure somewhere like uh, someone staying in Edinburgh City Centre for three days will be different from someone staying in a rural area for three days. So the model will be able to take account of that. Um, the other thing that will be considered will be the uh, influence of, of homecoming itself as a motivator, firstly, in attending the event, and secondly, in terms of uh, for those coming from outside Scotland, uh, the importance as a motivator for their visit to Scotland. And the importance will be weighted accordingly because we, we're very keen to ensure that we do isolate the impact of homecoming. There is so much happening in Scotland next year that we want to be uh, very sure that the figures that we have at the end of the process are robust. Uh, they don't include double counting. Um, so that is the, the, an outline of the, the process that is in place for homecoming. And if you're changing the methodology, um, improving it uh, from that used in 2009, will it still be possible to make a comparison with 2009, for instance? What we intend to do is run the data against the new updated methodology and also the methodology used in 2009 for that very reason, so that we can compare exactly like with like um, and then also provide what we believe the true economic impact of Homecoming in Scotland 2014 is based on the, the updated methodology. Yeah, the, 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 my, and my final uh, question, convener, just uh, I, I noticed that. Um, from the written submission that Visit Scotland generally have a target of achieving a kind of 20 to 1 return. Um, but I know it's with the homecoming that it, it, it seems to be 8 to 1. Um, how do you reconcile those, those two figures? These seem to be quite radically different targets. Uh, very briefly then, uh, I mean the 20 to 1 target is based on the, the marketing activity which Visit Scotland would, would undertake uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. The eight to one is the, the standard figure around events, because if you think about you know the, the nature of events and the amount of money that goes in uh, to not traditional marketing but but logistics etc, therefore you know the, the return is less. But eight to one is a pretty good standard uh, across the country. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Alison Johnson. Thank you very much, convener. My apologies for missing the very beginning of, of today's meeting. The introduction to the this submission um, says that the, this increased interest in Scotland as a visitor destination is evidenced by Visit Scotland's two main marketing campaigns, delivering nearly £310 million additional economic impact. And I'm probably going to pick up where my colleague Mike McKenzie left off there. Um, does that, in reaching that figure, have you subtracted the amount of um, investment that small businesses put into to their own marketing, you know, because everyone now from the smallest B&B &B to, uh, you know, to our, our luxury five-star hotels, they, a lot of them have fantastic websites, no matter how small the business is. So that's obviously, that's obviously helping Visit Scotland a great deal. Just, is that 310 million, can you attribute that directly to, to Visit Scotland investment? Yes, uh, the... Uh 
I think in the the uh, appendices to to the document we submitted, we actually show exactly how how we measure that. You know, in terms of uh, the reach that that we have, uh, which is the total population figure, uh, which and then we look at the percentage of respondents who who've then taken uh, a short break or a holiday in Scotland. Uh, and then we multiply that up by the number of trips taken during the period of, of that activity. We, we know what the average spend per, per party is, uh, and then we discount those who say they may or uh, may have come anyway. Uh, so in many ways, actually, we, we're quite self-punitive, you know, because it, they actually have to say that we definitely influenced their decision to come to Scotland, for particularly that reason that, that you rightly highlight. Thank you. Um, and w with regard to the question about the £20 you know, that you're um, challenging yourself to generate for every pound spent on marketing, is that normally achieved or is it a very challenging target? Always a challenging target, but I'm delighted to say that it is achieved, yeah. Okay. So do you think you might increase that target? I'd love to increase yes. the target, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, with, with regard to the, to the Commonwealth Games, I said I wasn't going to ask a question about events, but it's a specific question. Um, Visit Scotland will have an official presence within the media centre used by Sports Press during the Games. What exactly will that presence be for? Will you be hoping to you know, perhaps bump into leading international journalists and get them to see a bit of the country and perhaps report on it? What will that person be doing? Will, will they be reporting externally too? Yeah, there's, there's actually two media centres during the Commonwealth Games. There's the accredited media centre where you rightly say the sports journalists will be uh, and we will be there and uh, ideally what, what we would like to be doing because if you think about journalism nowadays they don't just write about one specific topic you know they've been stretched to do you know to cover other areas as well so there is an opportunity for us to get them out and about to, to show not just the uh, destinations but also the infrastructure that we have uh, and I will touch on later, you know, our whole event strategy going forward. So it's important, you know, that we take the opportunity uh, to, to get these advocates behind us in terms of what we may be bidding for in the future. In the non-accredited media centre, which will actually be at the teachers' building in St Enoch Square, those tend to be the, the non-specialist journalists, you know, so people from uh, the likes of Condé Nast, etc., and, and again, you know, it gives us a great opportunity to, to showcase the whole of Scotland uh, and not, not just, obviously, Glasgow. Okay, thank you. Can I ask one final question, convener? Um, taking a bit of a step backwards again to, to how we arrive at the figures and the methodologies used, um, I think Caroline Packman suggested a, a couple of consultants or agencies that are used. Is it always... Obviously, you know, techniques are becoming more sophisticated on an ongoing basis. Does it always make sense to use these external organisations? I would imagine some of them might be very expensive. And is there some in-house expertise, you know, being developed? Is it something that, that might be looked at in the future? Interestingly enough, the, uh, the, the business as usual me uh, measurement methodology is actually done in-house. Uh, and it's... Um, the methodology is one that, that is accepted by all national tourism organisations. So Visit Britain, Visit England, Visit Wales all, all use the same methodology. And there is a research group that works together uh, to develop uh, that particular programme. The uh, homecoming uh, methodology, uh, we actually took the lessons uh, and the recommendations from uh, the, a previous committee uh, which uh, talked about I think uh, we had one set of economists coming up with one number and another come up with another number uh, and usually the best thing to do is to bring them together to come up with one agreed number uh, and I think that gives us the, the independent evaluation that everyone was looking for. Thank you. Thank you, convener. Uh, Marco Piaggi. Thank you. I believe the collective noun for economists is a disagreement. Um, in... Uh, 2013, Ireland held what they called their, their year of the gathering. Uh, is imitation the sincerest form of flattery? And have we been able to pick up any tricks from watching what they did that year? Yeah, I think the, uh, the, the, to answer your first question, yes. <laughs> and it's actually nice uh, to, you know, for people to look at what Scotland is doing. Equally, you know, we're, we're very keen to, to learn from others around the world and cherry-pick, if you like, uh, the best practice from, from everywhere. Uh, 
Interestingly enough, uh, the latest information I have from uh, the gathering uh, in uh, Ireland is that the, uh, the Irish uh, tourism organisations are, are very happy uh, with the success. They didn't quite make the uh, figures that, that they'd hoped for, but given that uh, their economy, of course, was uh, in a pretty uh, dire strait, I think it gave their industry a boost, and uh, you know that that's um, something that, that that they were obviously looking to to take out from the gathering itself. It probably, I think they would accept that it got off to a slow start and, and then picked up during the year. Some great uh, events that, that took place, uh, and obviously the uh, the city of culture helped as well uh, in Derry. Mm -hmm. But operationally, there aren't really any great tricks to pick up? It, it was very much uh, left to individual communities. It, it wasn't organised in the same way as, mm -hmm. as we've organised it. Yeah. I think the thing to remember as well is that uh, um, the gathering was very much focused on the, the ancestral mm. Irish market, mm. whereas um, Homecoming 2014 is, has a much wider base, so it's the five themes of ancestry, food and drink, active, creative and natural target not just the ancestral tourism market but also um, other overseas mm -hmm. UK domestic tourism and indeed for the Scots themselves. The, the figures that you give for the, the homecoming investment were 5.5 million and 44 million anticipated return. I don't know what figures you were referring to with regard to Ireland but the figures I'd seen was that the budget for that was 13 million euros and that the return from overseas uh, visitors was estimated pro uh, on a preliminary basis at 170 million euros. Would you have any comment on the, the differences in scale there? Uh, well, the only thing I would say is that the, um, the, the gathering was their one event uh, for the whole year, so their whole budget went into that. Uh, clearly, we have a wealth of activities, homecoming only being one of them, Commonwealth Games, Ryder Cup, etc. So, you know, I think if, if you were to aggregate everything, you know, there, there would be parity around. Lastly, how much support is coming to promoting this from uh, Visit Britain, which is, after all, tasked with promoting Scotland, England, Wales and Northern Ireland? Yeah, Visit Britain are involved. Uh, they'll be involved with the, the Commonwealth Games. Uh, they've been uh, very helpful, actually, in terms of the Queen's Baton Relay activity that, uh, that's that been underway. Uh, we've worked with them in India, New Zealand, Australia, uh, and will do in Canada at the end of April. Uh, they've also picked up on the homecoming theme, uh, and that will be featured uh, as part of you know the general what's seen do. We just uh, did a, in, a big supplement in Britain magazine as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, Christian Ard. Thank you very much, Convener, uh, and good morning. Uh, I would like to ask you a question, uh, having more information on uh, your impact of the marketing abroad, and particularly the challenge in Europe this year, uh, having different events like Homecoming 2014 and um, the Ryder Cup, which is different, which maybe attract a lot more European and, 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 and of people coming from, from other countries. I would like to know, you know you're talking about a return of uh, 20 pounds for every pound you spend. Would you have a, a, an evaluation of uh, how this spending, uh, this return will be for different countries, how much the marketing is spent? You do have, and how did you evaluate that, how to spend this money prior to 2014? Yeah, well, it's a very good question, actually. It's about prioritisation. Uh, and uh, what we do is we, we look at the scale of opportunity in each market. There's a, there's a number of uh, elements that go into deciding uh, just how attractive those markets are. Um, one of them would be the size of the outbound market. Uh, then it's also about the propensity to, to travel to Scotland, so is there an affinity there, uh, or are we starting from scratch? Uh, so obviously our near neighbours in Europe are very important to us. Um, then we look at access, you know, how easy is it for people to, to get to, uh, to Scotland, and then there are other barriers like visas that come into play, etc. Um, all of that then allows us to uh, prioritise in terms of our investment and based on then what we think the, the return on that investment will be uh, uh, then dictates exactly how much uh, we will spend. Now, we don't do mass marketing. 
in any international market. It's very focused, very segment driven, uh, and with a thorough analysis of, of who we think are most likely to come to Scotland. We will have a, a feedback on this after 2014 to know. Yes, we will be able to. Unfortunately, because it's um, the Office of National Statistics, uh, the, the data is called IPS, it's International Passenger Survey. Uh, and we tend to, because it's done at the UK level first, and then we get the Scottish numbers. So there is a delay, but it'd be around about, I would think, April, May uh, 2015 when, when we have a clear sight uh, on just where they've come from uh, and in what, what quantities and what <coughs> value of that would be. Regarding the cost of this marketing campaigns, how do you choose to have a TV campaign or to have uh, maybe a low cost uh, ca campaign and have you learned from experiences uh, in, in past years for example 2009 yes uh, learned often from bitter experiences actually I mean it is a continuous learning uh, and of course uh, the way people um, uh, engage with media channels changes and is changing rapidly and, and you've already mentioned social media uh, digital media which actually in 2009 was not as evolved uh, as, a, as it is now. Uh, so we, we do take into account um, exactly the, the types of media that people use, why they use them, where they use them. Uh, actually, just a, a good example of that is uh, three years ago, the, the amount of traffic, and Carling talked about 15 million people coming on to visit scotland.com, almost exclusively they were coming from a desktop. Now there's 20 percent are coming from mobiles, uh, you know, mobile devices, uh, and another 20 percent coming from tablets. So you can see how that media landscape changes. Now that offers challenges, obviously, but it also offers up a, a you know a host of opportunities, uh, and we do a lot of ongoing research into how best to communicate with people. What would be cost effective? Do you think that uh, we can make some savings on uh, on marketing with? Uh uh, digitals and app and well, any savings we make, we do reinvest in, in more in more marketing and communication. And uh, in in terms of our cost per acquisition, which we measure very carefully, uh, we've we've reduced that year on year just because of the the increasing number of uh, more cost effective media that's available here. But there's no doubt TV is still the medium that that has mass reach. But we can't afford that in in every country. Uh, and nor is it appropriate in every country either. If I can ask a final question, uh, going back to uh, food and drinks, uh, which are important for, for, for Scotland, particularly the region I represent, uh, I know that we talk about marketing and to talk about television, but I see, you know, I was on holidays in France again uh, at Christmas, and supermarkets are so much uh, a, a great focus for people to, to decide, you know, where to go on holidays. And uh, we've got some fantastic export and food and drinks, particularly with whiskey, where you've got a, a corner on every supermarket being a, a, a Scottish and an advertisement for, for people to come to Scotland. How do you do you invest in this kind of? Uh, do you work with the, with the producers? Yes, there's a number of partners. Uh, we, we have, for example, in the past worked with Carrefour. Uh, and others, Monoprix, um, and uh, through Scotland Food and Drink and Scottish Development International in particular, uh, you will see specific events which feature uh, food and drink in particular, uh, and those are good opportunities um, to, to bring in the travel agents on the back of that, because you're right, uh, you know, it stimulates interest. Uh, people want to, you know, there's lots of evidence out there about people who actually want to go to the source of origin. Uh, and uh, I think the whiskey companies do it particularly well. I think the, the back stories, if you look at the labelling that, that they do, um, you know, actually make, make you know, the, the, the destination quite, quite interesting. And, and that's borne out by the, the level of interest that, that you would get in terms of whiskey, uh, whiskey clubs. Uh, that, that proliferate, but it's not just whisky. I mean, the, the, there's a whole range of, of Scottish food and drink uh, produce that that can be uh, utilised to, to help the overall destination sell. It, it would be good to have an, a, a, an evaluation of the impact of a di di different uh, way of marketing. We, we, can, we can certainly uh, more than happy to pull together the type of activity that, that we run in conjunction with our partners, and then the assessment of that activity for you. Yeah.
Thank you very much. Chick Brody. Thank you. And my apologies, uh, convener. Uh, can I encourage you to contact every HGV driver and make sure they don't jackknife at the height, their lorries at the, the height of the tourism season? Good morning. Um, I wonder if I may go back to, I think, the first comment I have received in, in the Institute of Marketing was that a brand that has a story to tell has meaning. And a brand that has meaning has impact and resonance. What's the story we're trying to tell, both in the homecoming and in the winning years? The overarching story? The overarching story for homecoming is that it's a year-long programme of unmissable events celebrating no, the I know what it is. of Scotland. What's the story? What are we trying to... How are we packaging this whole thing? Mm -hmm. you Not know, in terms of the techno speak of marketing. What is the story that we're trying to tell? Okay, uh, you may have seen our, our recent TV advertising. The way that we're positioning 2014 is that it is a year of brilliant moments. And within that homecoming for the Scottish market, it's a year of brilliant moments right on your doorstep. Which kind of surprises me in terms of you know, the homecoming activity. And we've just heard from uh, Mr Ruffey that there has been no mass marketing. And I would have thought the international market this was an opportunity really to uh, launch, I think using your word in, in the document, launch, a launch pad for years ahead. In that document it says, the first paragraph says, the ambition remains for Scotland's visitor economy to capitalise on the opportunity. It's too late for an ambition. What are we actually doing to make sure there is a launch pad and what are the programmes after the winning years and the homecoming? Uh, firstly, um, we could debate all day whether mass marketing is the right thing or whether segmented focus marketing uh, is the right approach and, and, and I think that's really down to resource and prioritisation but in terms of where we're going you're absolutely right uh, 2014 isn't the be all and end all it's about 2015 and beyond and for quite some time we, we've been out there securing business uh, for the out years uh, and and if, uh, if you think about what we already have on the books in terms of events for 2015, we have the IPC uh, World Swimming Championships, we have uh, the Turner Prize, we have the World Mountain Biking Championships, we have the World um, Orienteering Championships, the World Gymnastics, which are coming. Uh, and it's often a question I get asked when I'm out around the country is, what happens after 2014? And then you explain that actually the five world championships taking place in Scotland in 2015, and that's the kind of message that, that we have to, to start getting out there. On the basis, part of the winning years is the Ryder Cup. Mm -hmm. uh, I had meetings last week with European PGA and Scottish PGA on, on a project. Hopefully that will, will show some fruit in, in the near future. In talking to Scottish PGA, they're scrambling around looking for money to have tournaments the year after next and the years after that. How are you helping them? Well, in, ter in terms of uh, Scottish golf, um, post-2014, quite apart from the Open, which we know will come back to, to St Andrews uh, to, in 2015, and then the Scottish Open, we also have the, the Women's British Open. We also work uh, very closely uh, with the, uh, the Scottish Golf Union and the Scottish PGA uh, in terms of the, uh, the Challenge Tour. Uh, I think their issue is not so much is Visit Scotland or Event Scotland working with them and helping with them. It's actually trying to find wider sponsorship and it is a difficult climate uh, as we know but uh, I'm sure they're, they're more than aware. I don't need to tell them that, they're more than aware of that. Uh, but we are trying to, to work with them as much as we can. No, no, I understand Mr Ruffhead but if you say your ambition is to capitalise on the opportunities of 2014 uh, and no doubt we'll have an argument which is the bigger opportunity, the Commonwealth Games or the Ryder Cup. Uh, I am swayed by the latter. Uh, that's hardly capitalising on the opportunities, is it? If, if uh, you're saying that a major organisation uh, hopefully will be involved in, that, in the Ryder Cup, uh, are then going to have to, I'm sure they will, uh, in fact I know they will, look for corporate sponsors, but surely our major tours of marketing board should be assisting them in some way. Well, I think we are. We are already putting money into, into those events. Uh, clearly, we're not able to fully fund the whole event, and uh, 
you know, if, if it's going to be sustainable, they, you know, they need private sector partners coming in. The, uh, what we are doing is, is obviously working through all strata of golf from the, the very top of the professional game right down to uh, juniors coming through uh, through the system, through the Junior Club Golf Initiative, which uh, you know has been a huge success. But it's also working with golf clubs uh, and uh, with our partners in Scottish Enterprise. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, business upskilling programmes that have been taking place. One, to allow them to uh, take advantage of, of the opportunities that are afforded not just by the Ryder Cup, but golf in general, uh, but also in, in terms of sustainability. And uh, uh, I'm sure you know, anyone who plays golf will know that, that membership is falling. Uh, participation has uh, suffered over the last few years, but that's a, that's a world uh, it's, it's, it's not falling in every every case. There are some clubs that have got problems. There are some clubs that are actually growing. So, uh, and, and I think it would be helpful if somebody from Visit Scotland to attend the next CPG on golf to see exactly what what is going on. I wonder if if, um, if I might turn to a more local issue and ask. When I read the report, there was a lot of emphasis on the connection with Glasgow, understandably, uh, but spreading out from Glasgow. I mean, I've had meetings with, clearly, with uh, tourist uh, organisations who are responsible for tourism in the local authorities in the south of Scotland. Uh, and let me ask you two questions. One is, firstly, what engagement you actually have. Uh, and the second thing is, next year is the, or this year, is the 100th birthday of, 100th anniversary of the birthday of John Muir, who, as you know, uh, he worked with American presidents, helped develop Yosemite, and I've seen nothing other than through uh, the John Muir. I mean, I know that there's some activity, but a major opportunity internationally to attract people from California and across the states appears to have been missed. Is that the case? Well, uh, shall I talk about John Muir? About John Muir? Um, the John Muir Festival is a signature event within the Homecoming programme. Um, and it is one of the, the really the, the key events in the whole calendar. Um, it's a, a, it starts on the 17th of April with the, the official international event of the, the Kelpies in, in Falkirk with a fabulous event called Home. Um, then it then continues with the official opening of the John Muir Way in Dunbar. And then a whole program of... This is the one the First Minister's opening. Though. That's correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then followed by a whole program of community-led events right across the length of the way. So um, we'll probably be in the region of about 60 events in total over about a 10-day period. Um, so there's a, a huge amount of activity happening. How much of that has been communicated to Cal the people in California and the um, John Muir Society is in the States? We've been working very closely with them. The John Muir Festival has been one of the key events that has been focused and the market activity that has been undertaken today in North America. Um, and I'm aware that you requested a, a separate meeting on this subject, which we're yeah. liaising with your office to put in the diary. Um, but um, certainly that has been one of the events that we see as having the most appeal to the North American audience. Okay, thank you. And in terms of engagement with the local tourist people, because again, in terms of communication a la PGA, I don't see a lot of evidence in the conversation I'm having with the outspread of communications to uh, some of these local tourist organisations. Well, uh, uh, all I can say is, is um, what I was saying at, at the beginning of, of uh, this meeting. Um, I apologise for being late. Uh, I mean, we have been out. We're, we're talking to all the destination management organisations, mm. specifically with golf. We work very closely with Golf Tourism Scotland, who uh, represents um, a number of, of uh, the, the major players within the golfing industry. Uh, we've been working on an ongoing basis with the local authorities, uh, with Scottish Chambers, uh, CBI, IOD, uh, FSB, um, and in fact I'm down in uh, Dumfries shortly to talk to the destination management group down there. Um, we've been helping them uh, in terms of their creative place. Uh, so there's a lot of work that, that goes on, but there's a lot of work that goes on on an ongoing basis. Uh, so it's not just specific to any of these events, it's actually uh, what we would see as business as usual. 
Okay. I want to just a couple more quick questions. If I may take talk about localism again, in terms of uh, I think my, my my colleague Mr. Malik asked you the question about local procurement. We had the Open Championship at Muirfield this year, last year. Beg your pardon. Uh, we also have had available the possibility of a very local, very good ice cream manufacturer selling ice cream uh, at the Open. It was turned down in favour, and I know that's not your responsibility, but it was turned down in favour of uh, an ice cream manufacturer in London. What surety are we going to give local businesses that, you know, recognising competition, that, that we are going to really put an emphasis on local procurement of all services and all products as best we can? We do write that into our event contracts, uh, that, that we encourage people to, to source local mm -hmm. produce. Uh, and again, it goes back to an earlier question about um, part of the attraction is, of course, that people do want local produce, local arts and crafts, food and drink, etc. So as much as we can do within the, the, uh, you know, the limits of procurement law, um, you know, we, we can encourage that. Uh, and I have to say that the response, and it's not just about uh, local produce, it's also about um, healthy produce as well. And... Uh, you know, the response to date has been very encouraging and I, and I think more and more you're seeing events turning to uh, local suppliers, which has got to be encouraged. Okay. Question on that basis. Where are the economic consultants based? The economic consultants are based um, in Glasgow, at Glasgow Caledonia University. That's the headquarters? That's correct, yes. OK. Thank you. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah, Dennis. Yes. Uh, uh, perhaps this is a question to Malcolm. Uh, um, are you content that the industry, such as <coughs> the, the hotel industry and restaurateurs, are um, have sort of raised the standards? Because one of the criticisms we had in the past that some of the hotel accommodation and, and some of the guest houses, etc., wasn't of a standard that uh, people would return. In your opening remarks, you, you mentioned that. Uh, one of the challenges is to <coughs> actually ensure that people have a, an experience second to none uh, and obviously uh, there would be a return visit. Are, are you content that the, the industry has uh, stepped up to the plate and improved standards? Uh, content, no, because I think we can always carry on and, and improve and, and we're only as good as uh, you know the last visit that, that we've had. I think if you look at the, um, the standards across the world that are improving uh, and particularly but what I find quite interesting is as we look to the rest of the world uh, and visitors coming from there, their initial impression of um, vacations are you know, very high standard, Shangri-Las, Mandarin-type hotels. So that becomes a benchmark for everyone. Now, not everybody's going to look for a five, six-star experience, but what they are looking for is a, a friendly, welcome, value-for-money experience. And value-for-money can mean, obviously, many things, not just it's not about being cheap. Um, am, I, uh, am I convinced that, that we've made progress? Yes, I am. I think over the years there's been a lot of progress made. Um, and, I, and I also think that uh, a lot more progress can be made. So it, it's a never-ending journey, I'm afraid, but it's one that, that we really have to make sure that we rise to because if we don't, the competition is fierce out there and people will vote with their wallets and go elsewhere if they don't get the service levels that they expect. One of the <coughs> criticisms that quite often many of our restaurants, and especially in some of the rural areas, close early... Um, and obviously that's very difficult for people then maybe uh, to uh, obviously get evening meals, etc., or dinners. Um, are you working closely with the, the, the industry itself to see, well, you know, we've got opportunities, uh, not just for 2014 but beyond, um, to try and encourage uh, businesses maybe to, to try and stay open longer? Yes, we are, and, and, and we do that through the likes of the Scottish Tourism Alliance and, and with, uh, uh, also with as I said, other organisations that represent uh, the industry. Uh, I think also, over the last 10 years, uh, what you can notice, actually, is that instead of um, the tourism flows being very lumpy, so you had a huge peak you know, through the summer months and then uh, you know, a big trough <coughs> thereafter, it's actually started to spread more. So the, the shoulder months 
are actually becoming much more important. And, and that can only happen if people stay open. Uh, and, and it is about convincing them uh, you know, that the opportunity is there and that people will come if there's enough for them to see, do, and, as you rightly say, places for them yes. to go and eat. And finally, uh, convener, um, is Scotland? Are you promoting Scotland as an all round, uh, an all year round place to come to? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We follow up from Chick Rodney. Yes, I, I meant to say I, I also hope that Visit Scotland will play a role in making sure that no uh, communication port will ever have the logo uh, "Pure Dead Brilliant" in future. Um, just, just on the question, <laughs> on the question of. Just when you're talking about hotels, do you think it's right that a host hotel, if it's true, is charging £1,250 a night to include ticket for the Ryder Cup? Well, it certainly does nothing for the events industry going forward if, if we are seen to be involved in price gouging. Um, and uh, clearly, uh, if you think back to just a couple of years ago, uh, the hoteliers in Glasgow uh, and Glasgow City Marketing Bureau signed a price charter that, that said that there would be responsible pricing. Definition, you know, is, is within the, the, the beholder. But uh, I think everybody would accept that for such major events there is always a premium. But what, <laughs> what is the acceptable... Yeah, there's a premium and a premium. Uh, well, exactly. And, and what is the, the, the acceptable premium? Um, it's, it would be my impression that, that those rooms will not sell at that price. I'm told they're full. Yeah. Um, if that's the price, I'm not sure tickets. about that. And so, and just thinking about beyond 2014, if people feel that clearly they, they won't be in that particular place, it's a very, they feel it's a very disappointed. Valid point. And, and it is one that, that, you know, if you look at the events industry going forward, would concern us. I mean, we are positioning ourselves as. Uh, the Pet Scotland, the perfect stage. We already have major events coming to Scotland. We're seen as a desirable place to come and host events, not just events, but conferences. Uh, so it's absolutely fundamental that we address that particular issue. Thank you. Okay. Briefly, I'm Salam Alec. Yes, thank you. Uh, just coming back on that issue, I mean, markets will drive their own prices, and, uh, and you know, uh, and market prices dictate themselves. And healthy competition is healthy, it's not unhealthy. What I am wondering is perhaps, uh, are you supporting small uh, bed and breakfasts and various hotels to make sure that they're actually online so that we have as many choices for our uh, visitors as possible and also it will, it will allow a pricing structure to, to table out, in fact, because uh, there will be a range of price structures. Um, and what mechanism have you got at present for that? And what are your what are your aspirations in the future for that? But what what we actually have done is uh, we we have a dedicated contact centre which is looking at placing people who who are struggling to find affordable accommodation when when they come up. Uh, and that means sometimes we we put them out into the Ayrshires or we put them into Stirlingshire or wherever it may be. Uh, well, if it's available, yes, at the price that they're looking for. And, um, it, and we do that also for, for the Ryder Cup and, and uh, the whole of summer for the festivals as well, actually. Uh, not only that, we've uh, been working with uh, uh, other uh, non-traditional um, uh, tourism businesses, so people who may want to, to let out their homes. So we have a list of letting agents who, who are used to doing that. Um, obviously there, there are certain uh, you know laws that, that have to be uh, observed sorry interrupt I'm presuming because I know the time is short I'm presuming that this is not an exhausted list at present and and I'm, I'm just wondering uh, are you hoping to achieve that type of uh, attainment that you have a list that is an exhausted one so that people can simply just simply come to your website rather than trying to find other agents and other people around? We, we, can, we have on our website 6,000 businesses. Right. Uh, and then on top of that, we, we're also talking to over 1,000 businesses that normally wouldn't work with Visit Scotland because they don't see themselves uh, as being part of the tourism industry. Um, is it exhaustive? No, because there are other agents who, who will represent uh, other groupings, but we do feature those on the website and we will signpost to them. Yeah. That's excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah.
Okay, I've got one last question. Nobody else has got anything else they want to come in with. Um, we, we always ask you when, when, you, when you come to the committee, Mr. Ruffhead, about um, the uh, Visit Scotland's target for increasing tourist revenue uh, by 50% uh, from, two, from 2005 uh, for 10 years to 2015. Uh, we've got a year to go. Um, are we going to make it? The industry target uh, is uh, certainly there, and uh, it's it's difficult. I think, as I say every time, every time um, we we are doing uh, our utmost to to get there. I think uh, clearly at the end of 2014, we'll we'll have a better a better uh, picture of, of whether we do that or not. That will be a no then. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we'll let you off the hook on that one. Thank you very much for coming. Both uh, Caroline Packham and Malcolm Ruffin, that's been very helpful to Thank the you committee. Very much. Thank, Thank you, you for your time. Uh, we will now uh, have a short suspension and we will then go into private session. Thank you.